الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه وعلى ثم ما بعد أو نبو شيخ شيخ أبو عبد الله عبد الرحمن بن ميسان حفظه الله reminded us of an important matter he حفظه الله started by mentioning that this religion of Islam from its characteristics from what we find in it is that it is the religion of ease we find that it is a religion of ease as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in the meaning of the verse and he did not make for you any difficulty, any hardship in the religion. Likewise, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in the meaning of the verse, and Allah does not burden, and we do not burden a soul with more than it can bear. And the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa he said that Allah loves for his ease to be taken, just like he hates for his disobedience and his sins to be, to be committed. And so we find that there's ease in the religion. And this religion is the religion of ease. But it isn't every ease that is from the religion. And rather, there is ease that is specific and that is beloved to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves for us to take. And it is the legislated ease that we find in the religion. And so from that ease that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has legislated for us, is using dry ablution and dry purification when there is a hardship and performing whether wudu, ablution or taking the legislative bath if there is a hardship then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala legislated for us performing dry ablution dry purification Ammar bin Yasir, may Allah be pleased with him, he was sent by the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam to do something and he was traveling and he needed to take the legislated bath and he was not able to find water. And he, may Allah be pleased with him, he said that I started drooling myself in the dirt, not knowing how to perform dry ablution. So he rolled himself in the dirt, he said like, the camels roll themselves in the dirt. And then after he came back to the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he asked the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and he informed him of it. And the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said it, was, it would have been sufficient for you to hit the ground with your hands and then to wipe over your hands and your face. And so this is the proper way to perform dry ablution and dry, dry purification. It is to hit on the ground once with one's hands and then wipe over his hands and his face. And this is a ease that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala legislated for us. Whenever there is a hardship, whether the person cannot find water, or that it is a cold day in which using water is harmful for him and is a burden and is a difficulty for him, such as when the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he sent a group of his companions, may Allah be pleased with them, to battle. And their leader was Amr ibn al-As. May Allah be pleased with him. And he needed to take the legislated bath. And he had water. But it was a very cold night. And the water was cold. And it would have been a great burden upon him to take a bath. And so he performed dry ablution. He performed dry purification. And after he came back, he mentioned it to the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he asked him, you led the people in the prayer and you had not taken a bath. And he said to him, I remember the verse, the statement of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala that means, and do not kill yourselves for indeed Allah for indeed, Allah is merciful towards you. And the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam smiled in approval of his action. So it is legislated to take, to perform dry purification when it is very cold and the water is cold and there is a burden upon the person in performing, uh, in performing, uh, taking a bath. Or likewise, 
performing wudu. If it is a burden, such as if the person is ill or is injured, and it will make his injury worse, then it is also legislated for him to perform dry ablution. And likewise, one should not leave off performing purification if he needs to pray, regardless of his matter, even if he is ill. But then he should make dry ablution. If he's not able to go and perform wudu, if he was not able to find water, or that it will make him more sick, or that he could not find someone who can bring him the water to perform wudu in his place when he is ill, then he should perform dry ablution and pray. And this is from the ease that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala legislated for us. And also from the ease that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala legislated for this ummah, this nation of ease, that their matter is easy. From it is combining between the prayers. To combine between the prayers in cases of hardships, such as if the person is ill, it is permissible for him to combine between dhuhr and asr, and also between maghrib and isha, pray them together. But as for the fajr prayer, then it cannot be combined with any other prayer. And likewise, Jumu'ah prayer cannot be combined with other prayers. For from the reasons and from the times in which combining the prayers is legislated is when it rains. And it isn't any rain, and rather it is the rain that causes a burden upon the person. That is the rain that allows and permits one to combine between the prayers. So if it rains or it snows or there is mud or strong winds or other than this from different matters that cause a burden and a hardship upon the people, then it is legislated. It is legislated for the people to combine between the prayers to pray the dhuhr and asr together and likewise al maghrib al isha to pray them together. But not Jumu'ah as you heard. Because when the Messenger وسلم, was given a sermon, and a man came to him, and he complained to the Messenger وسلم, about drought, and he asked him to supplicate to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for the people, for it to rain. And the Messenger وسلم, did not finish, did not finish supplicating when he was on the minbar, except that the clouds came, and it started raining, and it started, started raining heavily. And it continued to rain for an entire week. And the Messenger وسلم, did not combine the Jumu'ah with Asr. And this is an evidence that the legislated way is to not combine Jumu'ah with Asr. And it is not permissible to combine them. And this is the stronger opinion. Although Jumu'ah prayer, if the person prays Jumu'ah prayer, it, it replaces the prayer of Asr. Yet they are two different, completely different prayers. And the people of knowledge, they mentioned 50 differences between Jumu'ah and Asr. And so, one does not combine and should not combine Jumu'ah with Asr. And rather should pray Jumu'ah on its own and Asr on its own. And from the, from the reasons which allow the person to combine between the prayers, as you heard, is illness. And from the illness is if the woman is having bleeding other than her regular bleeding of, of her peri periods, if she bleeds during other than that time, then it is permissible for her to combine between the prayers, because without a doubt this is an illness for her to bleed other than her the times of her period. And when she is on her, on her period, then she does not even pray. And likewise, from the reasons of combining between the prayers, and also short, shortening the prayers is traveling. And that starts when the person leaves and one does not combine nor shorten his prayers when he is at home before he leaves for travel. But rather after he leaves, after he leaves his home 
and his town. And while he's traveling, then it is, it is legislated for him to combine between the prayers and also to shorten the prayers, to pray the prayers that are four rak'at, to pray them two units of two units instead of four. And this is from the ease that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned in the verses, and Umar radiallahu anhu, Umar radiallahu anhu asked the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam about shortening the prayer when there is no fear. And the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he mentioned that this is, that it is a, something that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given from His bounty to this, hum, to this ummah. And the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, so accept that which Allah has given you from His bounty. And so, this is from the legislated matters. And also, and from the legislated ease, and from the legislated matters of ease that we find in this religion, that it is almost, that it is almost forgotten by many of the people and many of the masajid, is when during rain and snow and strong winds, and other than this, of the times in which there is a burden and there is a difficulty that they, in their call to the prayer, that they should say, pray in your places of residence. They should call during the call to the prayer, pray in your places of residence. Meaning you do not need to come and attend the congregational prayer, and rather that it is permissible for you to pray in your pray place of residence, and this is from the ease of the religion, but the prayer is never, never left. One, it is not permissible for one to leave the prayer. Even during battle, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala legislated for the people to pray in a specific way during battle. And from the ease that we find in this religion is praying in a way that the person, if he is ill or sick and cannot pray properly, that he prays in the best way that he can. Such as if he is able to stand in his, in his prayer, then he should stand. And if he's not able to, he's not, if he's not able to stand, he is, it is legislated for him to lean on a cane or a wall or a pillar or even another person next to him. And that is legislated. And if he still cannot stand, then it is legislated for him to sit down in the prayer. And if he's able to sit on the ground, that is preferred. And if he's not able to, then it is permissible for him to then to sit on a chair. And also, if he's not able to sit, then he can, because of an illness, it is permi permissible for him in that case to pray laying down. And he should face the qibla if he's able to. And if he's not able to, then he prays to whatever direction he's able to. And if the person cannot, is able to stand, then he is supposed to stand. And sitting down during the prayer, if he's able to stand, nullifies the prayer. But then if he's not able to go down and make sujood or make ruku', then he moves his head, he moves his head as to indicate that he is making ruku' or sujood. So there is ease in this religion. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us from those who follow the way of the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa And likewise, we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to, to give good health to our brothers who became ill, to give them good health and to remove their illnesses and to forgive those who have passed away from this illnesses that have befallen the people. وصلى الله وسلم وبارك على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين